doesn't love a good wireless cracking tutorial? This episode of Tech Chop is brought to you by Amazon. Welcome to episode 30 of Tech Chop. I, of course, am Paul Bauer, aka twitter.com slash Pablo. Now, I'm sure many of you have seen countless tutorials on how to crack web encryption on wireless access points, right? I mean, I even did one back in episode 22 of the old Bauer Power podcast using Bauer Puntu Linux and Grim Weepa. What about something that is supposed to be a little more secure, like WPA or WPA2? You've probably also heard about the standard wireless hacking programs like Aircrack NG or CowPatty, right? I have a relatively newer one for you that you may not have heard of, and it is readily available in the Backtrack Linux repos. It's a little gem called Reaver. Reaver's Google code page says that it's designed to conduct a brute force attack against the Wi-Fi protected setup, or WPS registrar pin, in order to recover WPA and WPA2 pass raises. Now like most brute force programs, it'll take some time, and the Reaver Google code page says that it can take generally 4 to 10 hours to crack a password. But if someone wants to get into a network, that's probably an acceptable amount of time. Reaver plays on a weakness in WPS described by Stefan Vihivak. Sorry if I butchered the name. In his paper available at the link below, he says, although WPS is marketed as being a secure way of configuring a wireless device, there are design and implementation flaws which enable an attacker to gain access to an otherwise sufficiently secured wireless network. He also said that all major vendors have WPS certified devices. That's great news for hackers and bad news for you. We're going to take a look at how to perform an attack with Reaver right after this. Need a new computer? Amazon has it. Need some toilet paper? Amazon has it. Want to read the latest best-selling book? Amazon has it. Amazon is literally your one-stop shop for everything you could possibly ever want online. They also resell items from some of your favorite online retailers like Tiger Direct. Except oftentimes with no taxes and cheaper shipping. Plus, if you sign up with Amazon Prime with a low cost of only $79 per year, you get free two-day shipping on millions of different items. Everything is delivered right to your door. No more driving to the store for your odds and ends, taking away from valuable Xbox time, shop in your underwear like you always wanted to do. Go to amazon.techchop.com. You'll get the same experience and prices, plus a small percentage of your purchase goes to help out Tech Chop. It's win-win for everybody. Visit amazon.techchop.com now and get your Amazon shop on. Bookmark amazon.techchop.com for all your future purchases and continue to help out the show. That's amazon.techchop.com. In the first part of the show, we discussed a relatively new way of hacking a wireless access point that is protected using WPA or WPA2 encryption by exploiting the relatively easy to brute force WPS standard that is enabled by default on most home wireless routers. We're going to perform our attack using a Linux utility called Reaver. Reaver is installed by default in Backtrack 5R3. If you have an older version of Backtrack, you should be able to install it by running apt-get install Reaver from the terminal. If you're running Ubuntu Linux, you need to download the source for Reaver from the link below. Extract the files, open a terminal, and change into the SRC directory for Reaver. Run sudo apt-get update, then run the command below to install the prerequisites for installing Reaver. Once you have the prereqs, run the configure script in the source directory to create your make file. Then run sudo make, then run sudo make install. For the rest of this video, I'm going to assume you already have Aircrack NG installed in Ubuntu as it's pre-installed on Backtrack, which I'm using for my testing. The first thing we're going to have to do is identify the name of our wireless device by running iwconfig from the terminal. Mine is WLAN0. We will then put our wireless card in monitor mode using Airmon NG and running Airmon NG start WLAN0, which creates a new virtual wireless network interface called Mon0, or Mon1 in my case. Next, we need to find a target, which we'll get by running arrow dump ng using the command arrow dump ng mon1, which will display a list of nearby access points. What type of encryption they're using, if any, but most importantly, their BSSID in hex format on the left. Select the hex BSSID value of your target, right click, and click copy. Now we'll bring Reaver into action by running the following command. Reaver minus i mon1 minus b the BSSID minus vv and click enter. 
Now you're gonna to wanna to go make some coffee while Reaver does its thing, which can take anywhere from two to 10 hours. We may also have to append dash dash no dash nax to your Reaver command if you notice that the Reaver is getting caught in a loop using the same pen. Also, after playing with this some more, I recommend saving some time by adding the minus C option to specify the radio channel, which you can easily find when running arrow dump ng. That keeps Reaver from unnecessarily hopping through the radio spectrum when we already know what channel our target's gonna be on. Here's a video from Lifehacker where they performed this test and were able to find the password for the access point in about two and a half hours. Check it out. This will take a while. In my successful test, it took roughly two and a half hours to crack the network and deliver me with the correct password. As I mentioned before, the documentation says it can take longer, between four and 10 hours, so it could take more or less time depending on your network. But when it's all said and done, Reaver makes it really disturbingly easy to crack a WPA or WPA2 Wi-Fi password. So what have we learned from this? Previously, people thought that the only way to crack a WPA or WPA2 network was to brute force the password. So many security experts suggested using really complex passwords. With this attack, it doesn't matter because the WPS pin is what's being brute forced here which is only made up of an eight digit password consisting of numbers only. Because a pin number is not complex, it can be brute forced in hours instead of days, weeks, or months. How can you protect yourself? I would suggest disabling WPS on your access points if you haven't already. On many home routers, that's as simple as unchecking a box. You might also want to add another layer of security to your access points by enabling Mac filtering. If a hacker somehow guesses the password using Reaver, theoretically, they should still be unable to connect if their MAC address is not in the allowed list. True, MAC addresses can be spoofed, but they would have to know one of the allowed MAC addresses ahead of time, and the threat of that is unlikely in most circumstances. That's all I have this week. If you have any other good ideas or suggestions on protecting your wireless from this or other attacks, Sound off in the comments or hit us up on our Facebook page. Be sure to like, fave, subscribe, and we'll catch you next week right here on Tech Shop. Tech Shop is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's here.